Hello everyone, welcome back to the Mama Vic channel and we've been running this channel for a while. We talk about cryptocurrencies, a lot of trends in the cryptocurrency space, but what you're seeing on the screen is one of those companies that I've liked to talk about a lot. It's been one of the main focuses, taking like 60% of my channel because, well, I've had an interest in artificial intelligence, machine learning, and we all kind of know that I, that is the future trend of how things are going to go considering the fact that many advanced cities are actually using that like if you go to the middle east they've already implement, implemented some kind of machine learning of some sorts and if you look at the phone you use the social media uh, all kinds of information that you know targeting ads uh, there's some kind of data analysis infrastructure that most of these that all of these companies have to run they have to have data an analysis so people that understand how to channel information through neural networks and then on the the other side they get an output a desired output depending on what they're looking at what they're looking for companies like tesla need to implement some kind of machine learning in order to to optimize their uh, vision for their cars you know literal vision for how the cars perceive the environment and a lot of companies have to understand this i mean we have presidents that have said that the countries that will truly truly dominate the sector of artificial intelligence will be the superpowers but that brings me to this segment this particular company the reason why fish.ai fascinates me this particular article is a new cto that was hired by fish.ai but if you actually go to the fetch website um they actually changed their landing page it was leading to an application they created but they kind of changes that changed that but that's not the point so Essentially, what these guys are trying to do is democratize the ability to leverage artificial intelligence and machine learning. These are not just buzzwords. They're creating these sort of multi-agent systems or autonomous economic agents that use data to, you know, communicate to, they use that data to autonomously communicate with each other to, to optimize, to create the most efficient and effective environment or usage of your own data or a machine's data or a company's data without that company having to hire specialized people that are that are specialized in the field of artificial intelligence and know how to run these various neural networks so they're trying to package this in the technology so it's not something easy to do through these things we call multi-agent systems and they're trying to maintain certain you know objectives like privacy and you know the ability for these for for this technology or these agents to communicate with each other so in other words for example you want to create targeted ads you have a a company that wants to create targeted ads you can actually create these ads without necessarily having to know the identity of the customers on the other end because your agents can leverage the other agents information maybe they're interested in in certain cups or i don't know certain types of cars or certain types of clothes so the agents are able to know which other agents are interested in that kind of products and if you're the one that owns that agent you can set your own boundary conditions maybe i want these kinds of trousers that are built at the bottom that are khaki in color so someone out there that's selling those kinds of clothes will know there's information out there that has been optimized by a certain technology you know that allows me to get access to that information and you know sort it out properly so that i can use it the best way i can without necessarily having to infringe on the privacy of the other person now there's of course we're in the bear market right now and things are a bit tricky you know uh, uh things are getting shifted here and there we're seeing a lot of drama uh, companies like genesis getting uh almost uh, getting insolvent uh, FTX and exchange that crashed so we're seeing all these repo effects in the crypto market that are causing things to crash the way they are but what's interesting is that this particular company they're trying to push on and they're trying to push on so there's some new uh, developments in the company like welcoming a new CTO who's Edward Shirt uh, um, Edward Fitzgerald actually so there was a previous CTO who was known as Jonathan Ward who's going to take on the role of CTO in this particular company so chief technical officer that has really helped the company that has had had the vision from the start to help the company get to where it is in terms of materializing the things we've just talked about so there's a lot of papers that have been written about those multi-agent systems but they've been able to theorize those things and package them in a blockchain so in his role so the new CTO Edward will be responsible for transitioning the company's operations from research to product delivery and improve services while highlighting technological competitiveness so we're talking about you know improving supply chains uh, i mean optimizing technology that can work with supply chains and whatever other that's just one example whatever other use cases maybe hospitals want to use this to 
to to to uh, share machine learning models about maybe x-rays like as an example they've given in the past you want to get different patient data out there but you don't want to necessarily infringe on the privacy of those patients so all this also goes into all of this now if you read this article there was another article here so first of all welcome to the new cto and we wish the best for this person and we hope he takes fetch uh, to greater heights in terms of you know implementing this technology and using it in a practical sense so and kudos on the new acquisi acquisition guys so we have this other article that came out. This is Kamal Ved, a chief product officer at Fetch.ai. So remember, this is the bear market. So the fact that they're you know making these transitions, these shifts, these hires, and pushing out these articles. Harkonnen. Let me just mention Harkonnen is the platform from which I learned Fetch from the first time. This was about three and a half years ago. So it was very interesting to see that they've written another article, sort of interviewing uh, one of the chief people from Fetch. So chief product officer at Fetch.ai. So this was sort of an interview between him and another person called Ishan Pandi sort of asking questions. And there were some, you know, questions that caught my eye. Like, for example, this one, um, is the privacy of user data susceptible in decentralized networks? And if so, how do we protect it? And Kamal responded as such. He was like, fetch, today I use as agent technologies that can not only interact using the blockchain, but also interact peer to peer with other agents. Agents can act autonomously and privately by making decisions based on the data from their peer agents while not revealing this information to its owner. Besides agents based privacy, we also develop double flow, which is another way of sharing files, a double, double flow product that allows the private sharing of data such as files by leveraging proxy re encryption. So I like the encryption part to hide information from the intermediate nodes that route this information. Now, guys, if you understand, if you're running nodes, Fetch.ai runs on the proof of stake network. And if you're running different nodes, different validators, you can also like Filecoin, different nodes can run to enable storage of data, you know, uh, privately and in a decentralized manner. So in this case, you have nodes, of course, monitoring the network, but you want to maintain the privacy of whatever files are being stored by whatever pub, uh, particular public address or wallet. So the fact that there is this in, um, privacy implementation of this storage of this data is extremely very you know exciting for me because it shows that there's that kind of thinking uh, as to where crypto is going. It should be targeted towards a more decentralized infrastructure prepared for a more decentralized future, hence the privacy factor of it and less of the centralization. And that's what they're constantly pushing for even in the, the way they spread out the validators. So we're also looking, we are also working on decentralized identity implementations that use ZK SNARKs, like the technology kind of used by Monero and other privacy tokens to assert and verify a claim without revealing any additional information related to the user's identity. Now, of course, the way that works is that, for example, you have user A and user B transacting and pushing funds from the other side. You may you might check the uh, to prove that indeed funds were transferred from one user to another, but you have no idea how much funds were transferred. So that improves on the privacy. And you might also choose on which wallets can actually monitor that particular transaction. Now, he went ahead to say that same uh, person who is the actually he's the chief product officer at Fetch.ai. He tweeted this out with depressed and nervous crypto markets, one would be tempted to throw in the towel on 2022 and spend time with the family. But Fetch.ai, our engineers continue to further develop our agent in blockchain tech to make it even more accessible and usable for real world applications. So that's very encouraging. Given the current scenario, a lot of cryptocurrencies have taken a tank in terms of price. And because a lot of people view things in terms of price, of course, it can get very discouraging. Uh, a lot of unprofitable companies get washed out. And we look at all these spillover from centralized exchanges way back from Blockify, um, Three Arrows Capital, Celsius Network, and then looking at the current still centralized exchange collapse in FTX and other exchanges, plus also the DeFi contagion that happened with Luna. All these things are causing the bear market to be the way it is. Extremely brutal, and not to mention NFTs as well. A lot of people bought NFTs for millions, tens of thousands and thousands and hundreds of dollars. And all these things have crashed to more than 98%, some 99%, others more than 100% because you probably never expect them to return. So it's pretty brutal. But in more positive news, Fresh AI had their convention in India, in New Delhi. We had a blast at our first ever community meetup in India. Here's a glimpse of the event from one of our keynote 
Thank you to all who joined us and here's to the next one. So this was a Cosmpy or Cos Cosmos Python. So being able to develop uh, on Cosmos using if you are a Python developer. So that's extremely positive because there's a lot of people out there that, you know, no particular languages like Python is very popular or even JavaScript. They have a when you go to their docs, as I'll show you, you can also develop in JavaScript. They support that on their blockchain and the ecosystem. These are the tools they're building out to enable the things we talked about first. So this is the CEO tweeting this out. Let's build let's build our products which bring true utility to Web3, not just financial product. So this was in response to a tweet which states as such, as we're transitioning from research stage to delivering products, we have some exciting news. Meet Edward Fitzgerald, our new CTO. We're very proud and excited about having Ed take at Fisher AI to the next level. Find out more. And that's the article we just looked at. So, and then in light of, you know, encouraging the validators, because it's a proof of stake network. So you have these validators running the network to confirm transactions to make sure it's secure. So we're proud to announce that round three of the foundation delegations analysis has been completed congratulations to all the validators who have received delegations and we apologize for the wait on this round going forward we'd like to review them every quarter for upkeeping so there are certain standards they're following like uh, i think they mentioned them here like advanced delegation running relayers promoting face.ai info building applications and going above and beyond this time around we choose to split delegations to cut into two categories Basic delegations based on active governance, commission above 5% uh, uptime. Also to throw in a chip shot out there, I also run a validator node. It didn't qualify for this, but it's understandable. It's most of the OGs that started at the beginning that qualify for that because they need to watch your track record. So you can support my node, which is Maverick Staking, which would be extremely, extremely important. It requires a tremendous amount of effort setting up the infrastructure and backing up everything. But I finally completed every single thing, every little infrastructure and all the software setups that I need to set up. So it's ready to go. So guys, the, all the support would be highly appreciated. Now, the thing I want to talk about lastly was the documents page. When you go to the Fetch AI documents page, you find collective learning, uh, you can learn about their collective learning suit, which is a way of optimizing these machine learning algorithms. You can share the different models and weights between different uh, participants about a, a specific topic, like the X-ray thing we talked about between hospitals. You can share this data without necessarily infringing on the privacy of other users. Or you can spread it out in other things, maybe delivery of products or all other financial instruments. So Colon is one of those products that's being designed to do specifically that. And you can see you can install a you can install something using Keras, which is one of the you know most popular ways of navigating machine learning algorithms. And you can also see PyTorch right over here. So this is extremely exciting to see that there's a blockchain actually focusing on implementing some of these AI focused solutions and standards that the world knows and loves, and hopefully the ones that will be at the forefront of AI development. When you go further documents page, you can also get others like create React app templates. So if you're into just like Cosmos, I mean, just like uh, Python, you can also develop things in Python. You can also develop things in React, which is a very popular language for developing smart contracts, especially gives you a lot of dynamic. Uh, it's a bit dynamic. It's a bit more flexible. You can design things to your wants and needs. So you can also install. You can uh, there's another Genesis platform that they talk about here. Genesis is a command line tool for rapid contract and service development for fresh to AI blockchain ecosystem and other Cosmosm enabled blockchains. So this allows you to also develop an easy way to develop smart contracts and other applications to interact with the Cosmos ecosystem. And you can implement this through fresh to AI, which increases the use case of this blockchain. And remember, the best time to build is actually during the bear market. So guys, if you have those skills, I urge you to go out there and try to find out what you can contribute towards these ecosystems that you know and love and take us beyond just financial use cases, but see us reach that point of actual practical use cases. And this is an opportunity in the bear market to build an application that might just be it. I mean, what makes you think you might, you might be the person to develop that application that might be the it application out there that, that might have or garner that global adoption you just never know guys so go out there get working and try out some of these tools that people are working so hard to provide out there all right guys i hope you learned something and i'll see you on the next one take care bye bye